Well, welcome everyone to worship, another recorded broadcast of worship for what is going to be now the sixth Sunday of Easter over the weekend of May 16th and 17th. Welcome to all of you who are members watching in from home, even uh, increasing number of non-members taking in worship, and we uh, welcome you as well. Just a few announcements before we actually head into worship. This is a wonderful set of texts that we have, a chance for us to consider a word that we only hear about once during the year, and that is the word advocate. From the Gospel of John, the word is that we have an advocate, God's spirit with us, present, walking us through trouble. Hopefully some good words for everyone today. The announcements are uh, simple enough. Last Sunday, what a wonderful gathering we had. Outdoor chapel, 20 minutes long. About 125 of us gathered, and it was just right. Chance to be spaced out. Everybody had a mask on. A uh, chance to plant some flowers just as family units out there. And just thanks to everybody for making that work. And it was a cold morning. I know those who came were pretty brave. So I uh, really appreciate it now. Next Sunday, which is the 24th of May, we'll be gathering for chapel again. Another chance to be together and gather safely uh, outdoors. This time you'll be parking your cars and heading out. Bring your lawn chairs. Gather in around over here as if it's Easter morning. We'll be set up on the cemetery side on Memorial Day Sunday. And uh, we'll be doing a variety of things and, and just a lot of time to pray. A lot of time to pray over graduates, uh, couple kids, uh, Ethan Wright and Ashley Olson graduating from high school and Austin Holes uh, graduating from vocational school. We'll remember all of them. Bring a card if you like. That'd be nice. We also have put the word out. Please let us know. The office may not know of other people graduating. Please let us know. We have time yet to get the word out. So we kind of put that on you if you can help us stay organized with that. We want to celebrate these milestones in these young people's lives. And you know, this year maybe in particular, when they don't have graduation ceremonies, that we can do a little something in remembering them. That's on the 24th. We're also welcoming new members. We go back a couple of months now where we've been trying to put this all together and of course it's kind of apple cart turned, uh, turned over uh, with all of our distancing. But we've got households that are looking forward to being prayed over on the 24th and we'll just have them stand and give them a wave as we welcome them into, uh, into their membership here at Beaver Valley. And we will decorate graves. We'll be handing out at the end of our short chapel service long-stemmed red carnations for anybody that wants one to either decorate, uh, lay on a grave out here, or take home with you. Now I will say this about the weather. If it's raining on the 24th, we're not going to do chapel. We will be out here in our raincoats uh, handing out long stem flowers. You can come and spend whatever time you like at the cemetery or just come for a, a, a simple morning prayer and off you go. So just uh, know that we're going to have to be that flexible with weather uh, if in fact it's typical Memorial Day weekend weather. Uh, it might be something we have to fall back onto. Please be watching beavervalleylutheran.org. That's our church's website, out of their hubs, pretty much everything we do, the announcements and upcoming events, of course, worship services. Also, your ability to do online giving, very easy to set up. Call the church office if you need help, and thank you. Many people responded in the last week using those little envelopes we mailed out uh, to give your offering for the month of May or for your week, however you're handling that. We are so grateful for the uh, very uh, thorough support of our ministry as we are walking through these uncertain times together. I invite you now to prepare your home for worship. Just quiet, quiet the house as, as, as needed and uh, we uh, worship now together. And do so in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The bulletin was emailed out, by the way, to you, and uh, hopefully you had a chance to download the bulletin. Whether you did or didn't, you can still worship this morning, but the call to worship is a responsive reading. Live in God's love, 
Let that love be poured out for all God's people. Bring hope and peace to all whom you meet. We are called to be God's witnesses. Celebrate and rejoice. Praise be to God who has called, healed, and given us a ministry of peace. Amen. Our opening song is uh, Day by Day, hymn number 790, and we will be singing all three verses. I want to thank Dale Hansen for being our song leader uh, for our two hymns this morning. And Gingy Hansen at the piano today. Thank you. Day by day, all three verses of hymn 790. Day by day, your mercies, Lord, attend me, bringing comfort to my anxious soul. Day by day, the blessings, Lord, you send me, draw me near to my heavenly goal. Love divine beyond all mortal measure, Brings to naught the burdens of my quest. Savior, lead me to the home I treasure, where at last I'll find eternal rest. Day by day, I know you will provide me strength to serve and wisdom to obey. I will seek your loving will to guide me for the past I struggle day by day. I will fear no evil of the morrow. I will trust in your enduring grace. Savior, help me bear life's pain and sorrow till in glory I behold your face. Oh, what joy to know that you are near me when my burdens grow too great to bear. Oh, what joy to know that you will hear me when I come, O oh Lord, to you in prayer. Day by day, no matter what betide me, you will hold me ever in your hand. Savior, with your presence here to guide me, I will reach at last the promised land. The prayer of the day is prayed uh, as we pray together. Lord of wondrous light and power, we come to you this day to learn of your will for our lives. Be our advocate Heal our wounds, lift our spirits, give us courage and confidence to boldly serve you in all that we do. Amen. I want to thank Sylvia Benson for being our lector today. The first lesson for today is from Acts, the 17th chapter. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals 
life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the time of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The second lesson is from 1 Peter, the third chapter. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh and made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here end the lessons for today. Our gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 21, kind of picking up where we left off last Sunday. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Children's sermon time. Thank you again, Mary Lee. And I'll need to add, um, this is kind of the end now of what had been uh, Sunday school lesson time. And Mary Lee, thank you for stepping up and giving to our families with young children um, some really good content here this last month and a half going on two months. So thank you for your help with all this. Well, it's good to be here today. 
Our gospel story today is about Jesus talking to his disciples after he had risen from the dead. He told them that he could no longer physically be with them anymore, but he was giving them his love to comfort them when he was gone. He was going to heaven. This gift of love is the Holy Spirit. He gave this gift to us, too. Well, this gets a little bit confusing. God's love is with us. Jesus' love is with us. And now the Holy Spirit's love. But earlier, he had told about how he, Jesus, is God, and God's love is him, and the Holy Spirit is God, too. They are three in one. God the Father, Jesus his Son, and the Holy Spirit, all kind of woven together in one love given to you and me. So I thought our activity this week could be to make a weaving. You need three pieces of paper, some glue and some scissors, and the first step is to prepare the papers for weaving. This paper's been folded in half. That's step one. And then this paper was folded in half and in half again. And this gives you lines so that you can cut along these lines. And then you make your weaving strips. So that's what we do to prepare. Now there's one more thing to prepare. See that all these cuts that are made in here? I did that by using the paper strip. I laid it on here and traced it so I had all the lines to cut on. And then finally, the weaving strips are woven into all those openings. You go under, you go over, you go under, you go over. And while you're doing all this weaving, think about how God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all three are woven in to your life. They're there to comfort you. Jesus gave us this love, and it's all woven together. And then on the very ends, you have to put a little glue on there to keep this weaving together. And then finally, on the third sheet of paper, I want you to cut out a shape that means love to you. I cut out a heart. You could do a cross or whatever you want, but you fold the paper, cut out your shape, and I put this heart on here to remind me that the love is there from Father, Son, Holy Spirit, on the front and the back, it's all around me. We've got three in one. And that's the lesson for today. Dear God, we thank you so much for giving us the love and comfort of the Holy Spirit. It makes it a little easier getting through these tough times when we know that your love is woven into our hearts to comfort us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good. Thanks again, Mary. I'll also say to parents, uh, in the coming weeks now, we're still going to be using your Spark Bibles. So I know that we've been gifting to children here at Beaver Valley the Spark Bible, the big color pages. We're going to be getting back to just more traditional, a um, little lighter touch uh, children's sermons, but we will definitely be often using the Spark Bible, and you can have those at the ready at home. Let's, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear God, either you are for us or we are lost. Either you set us free and give us the hope of heaven or there will be no tomorrow. For your Holy Spirit's work and presence within each of our lives, we give you thanks. Amen. 
Well, there's a formula today. Let's call it that. There's a formula to pay attention to. I'll lead into it in this way. Either I have a good mechanic to help me along the way, or I'll be stranded without a vehicle. It won't take many months. This past weekend, either I had three smart son-in-laws helping put together a fire table, uh, or it, the project would not have happened, I can assure you. Either I have a good doctor, or I won't live as long as I could. Either I will seek the advice of an accountant, or I will likely miss uh, some things on a tax return. And I could go on and on and on, and all it would be is a display of how really incompetent I am. Man, I need advocates. I need people who are for me to stand beside me and help me do the things I can't do. That's one really good definition of an advocate. People who are for you. Um, an advocate argues for you. There's even uh, a nice article or two written on what um, the Greek word means. It can be counselor, but it really can be used to describe a defense attorney, someone who's protecting you and making arguments for you on your behalf. And we could go a long time on that word study. Well, that word advocate comes to us, as I said, from the Gospel of John. And it opens up a huge conversation, a cosmic conversation for us as people of faith. Jesus is soon to ascend our beautiful painting here at Beaver Valley. Uh, Jesus is soon to ascend to heaven, to sit at the right hand of the Father. John 14, we began with the opening verses of the chapter last week, and already we were talking about heaven about Jesus leaving and going ahead of the disciples and uh, preparing many rooms um, for uh, all of us who trust in mercy, all peoples and all nations who trust in grace. There was that number, 144,000, remember? Perfect number, complete symmetry, stamped with the providential stamp of God with that multiplication factor of a 1,000. Well, here we are now, we're continuing to talk about heaven. Heaven is on our minds these last Sundays of Easter. But, how, but also, we should be talking about how we live in the meantime. If we're, we're assured of heaven, then what does that do to our living now? Let me take the liberty, as I did a week ago, of directing our attention to the magazine, Living Lutheran. It's a wonderful tool for the church. Living Lutheran, very affordable. Boy, just order that for your, your home and you will not regret it. The very back page of the most recent issue of Living Lutheran, and all the, all the time in every issue, our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, writes a one-page one page article. This particular time, uh, she wrote the article entitled, Freed to Serve. And I think she's doing a masterful job in this short article of connecting uh, what we're talking about today. That, that with heaven promised, it, it gives us a kind of freedom that we can count on and it makes us into who we are. I'm going to read about three and a half, four paragraphs here of this beautiful article. She begins by saying, Lutherans have an appreciation for the complexity of life. We know that we are saint and sinner. We know the word comes to us as law and gospel. We confess Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father in eternity and true human being, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. There's some of that weaving, Mary. That God is Jesus and Jesus is with us even in spirit. It's all the same promise. It's grace and it's God's mercy all the time. Then she continues, now consider this paradox from Martin Luther's treatise on the freedom of a Christian. Luther wrote, a Christian is Lord of all, completely free of everything. A Christian is servant, completely attentive to the needs of all. Well, this is what it means to be justified. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemp redemption that is in Christ Jesus, wrote St. Paul in Romans chapter 3. 
Luther makes the point that God freely chose to redeem the world through Christ's freely chosen obedience to God's will. It's not what we have done or could ever do. It's not up to us. This is God's work alone, which we accept by faith or in which we trust. All the time and physical, emotional and spiritual energy I have put spent in defensive self-justification could probably power a small city for a long time. It's futile, my work. It's exhausting. Instead, in God's great gift of grace, we are set free. We are the beloved. This is how Luther explains how God affects our freedom. Lord Jesus, you are my righteousness just as I am your sin. You've taken upon yourself what is mine and given to me what is yours. And finally she writes, here is where Luther makes Christian freedom a paradox. No longer crushed by the weight of self-justification, but gloriously free by being bound to the righteousness of God, we are free to serve. Free to serve the neighbor. Well, I hope that you can see heaven's the gift already granted to those who live their lives one earthly day at a time with the advocate's help, living then this freedom, but freedom for the sake of others, not for self, not for just rampant individualism, but freedom for others. So sure that in Christ, the upward heavenly calling has been granted, as St. Paul wrote, I'm able to live without fear even in these uncertain times. Listen to the last paragraph that Bishop Elizabeth Eaton wrote. There is much in the world that could cause us to disconnect from each other, to lay in enough supplies, literally and figuratively, so we can't be touched by anything. Again, a paradox. In constructing our own security, we make ourselves prisoners. It's only in the freedom of Christ that is lived in service to the neighbor that we are truly free. Freedom. Easter's about freedom. Freedom to live till we die. Freedom to not be afraid of that cemetery. To not be afraid next Sunday gathering out there for chapel. This formula works. Yes, because I have a good mechanic, I can drive with confidence. Uh, yes, because I have three really gifted son in laws. I sat at my fire table last night. And because Jesus is out ahead of me, has ascended into heaven, has secured a place of grace for me, I can live in the joy of heaven now. So that on my best days, with the advocate's help, you more than me. On my best days, when the advocate is is something that I'm paying attention to or has grabbed me. You more than me. On my best days, with the advocate's help, doing the things for me that I cannot do for myself. Just today. Just today. Because tomorrow, in all the tomorrows to the end, it's not my work to do. I couldn't do that work if I tried. Thank goodness I have an advocate who will get me there. Amen. And so now we join in the prayers of the church. Let us pray. Dear God, you dwell among us as an advocate, helper, counselor, protector. You do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. You bring us to new life having interceded for us when we have nothing. We thank you for daily mercies. That's all that we need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we remember in our prayers those who are hospitalized or suffering, suffering with illness or are going to be going through surgeries. We continue to pray for Beulah Parkinson and so many who are really shut in these days up in skilled cares. Continue to pray for young Jordan Ramazani. Continue to pray for Tim Joris. We pray for Keith Barr and Denny Schutte, David Vandenhall, 
Haley Himes, thankful for her successful surgery. Continue to pray for Don Graff, Maya Kiefer, Ingrid Briggle, Don Johnson, Martha McDonald, Jim Anderson, and Jane Anderson. We pray for Lynn Bonander, David Burnt, David T. Arnott, and all of those we lift up before you in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for kindness and genuine patience and concern among people in these confusing times. As we open things up in our communities, we open up the economy, may we find wisdom in increasing our awareness of the vulnerability of others. May we do our best to look out beyond ourselves and keep serving those most impacted by the pandemic. Dear God, help the church and this congregation be smart as we work to be community apart and yet coming back together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And dear God, we do look ahead to next week. We do want to do a good job of celebrating our graduates, of welcoming new members, of honoring all those who've gone before us, with the dedication and decorating of graves. We are thankful, dear God, for the daily life of this parish as well. Food continuing to be brought for the food pantry all through Easter season. Men gathering for men's breakfast, Zoom, phone call this Thursday. Thank you, dear God, that we can be together in all kinds of ways for spiritual connecting. Thank you, dear God, that you are walking right beside us and keeping us alive as your people. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join with me in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing song, My Life Flows On, an endless song, hymn 763. If you have your hymnal at home, pay attention. Verses 1, 2, and 4. Verses 1, 2, and 4 of hymn 763. My Life Flows On, in endless song. life flows on in endless song above verse lamentation I catch the sweet throw far off him that hails a new creation no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm leaning since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm. Well, to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? No storm shake my inmost calm. While to that rock I'm clinging, 
Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Join with me in the benediction. We've been refreshed and restored. We've been called and guided. Let us go forth knowing who our true shepherd is, following his path, secure in the knowledge that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. Amen.